standard demonstration is to use sources of alpha, beta and gamma with different absorbers. That is what we have illustrated here, starting with alpha particles. They approach, but then fail to penetrate the first barrier, which is merely a thin sheet of paper. In fact, alpha particles are absorbed by only a few centimetres of air. It would make sense to do this experiment in a vacuum. The beta particles have a much more substantial range. They pass through the piece of paper easily, but they would be completely stopped by a thin sheet of plywood or aluminium. Gamma radiation has a very long range. It passes very easily through the pieces of paper and through the aluminium. And then some of it will pass through a thick sheet of lead. So in summary, alpha radiation is absorbed by a thin sheet of paper. Beta radiation is absorbed by a thin sheet of aluminium or a piece of plywood. But gamma radiation is not completely absorbed even by a thick sheet of lead. This does not mean that alpha radiation is less dangerous than gamma radiation. In fact, the contrary is true. A good analogy is that alpha particles are like an elephant blundering through a jungle. They are quickly stopped, but do a lot of damage before that happens. However, the danger of radioactivity depends upon the circumstances, and that is treated in a separate video. Gamma is absorbed when it passes through any material, but particularly effectively by solid, dense materials such as lead. If we find the thickness of the material that halves the amount of radiation passing through, and then allow the radiation to pass through the same thickness again and again, the intensity will halve each time, but it will never completely disappear. If we plot a graph of intensity of radiation against the thickness of material that it has passed through, the resulting curve will be exponential.